Now you asked about why people cheat and whether men cheat more than women. Whether men cheat more than women, I'll start on that because that's, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a controversial thing to say on the internet. It would be a controversial thing to write on a blog, but in a human mating behavior lab, right? Somewhere, somewhere that actually studies infidelity, this would be one of the most banal things you could ever say, which is that men do cheat more than women, right? Now, I'm not saying that nobody disagrees with this. I'm not saying that there aren't some researchers who say, you know, you know maybe there's, there's more evenness here, or maybe, maybe women actually cheat more. And maybe in some subpopulations, right, in circumspect socioecologies and in some age groups, maybe infidelity rates vary. But what do we see? Well, we see that in general, right, women report getting, women, heterosexual women report getting cheated on more than heterosexual men, right? So they say, so you ask people, have you ever been cheated on? Women are more likely to say they have been. And then when you ask people, have you ever cheated? Men tend to say, yeah, I, uh, you know, more, right? So men admit to cheating more on these anonymous surveys, right? And you can say, well, survey data, self-report, maybe, maybe women are more likely to lie, right? But then <laughs> that's a bit of a silly thing to say because the research that we have on lying indicates that men are more duplicitous, right? Men lie more. I'm not saying it's a big sex difference, but anytime someone's tried to look into that, that I'm aware of, it, it's tended to say, okay, men seem more apt towards lying. And then finally, the final piece of evidence on this, right? When, when we're saying, how do we know that men cheat more? Is when you look at mate poachers, right? So th this is this is the the other person in the scenario, right? The the third party. Yes, the interloper. When you ask men and women, um, you know, do, have you have you succeeded? You know, have you attempted mate poaching? Have you succeeded for short term mating, right? Uncommitted mating. So there's two types of mate poaching. There's this infidelity that we're talking about, and then there's the second type, which is also infidelity, but it's you're starting a new relationship. It seems to be, at least in Western samples, right, and this is a less studied fact, that women who mate poach have higher success. So when you take all those findings together, So right, women who are single and want to, if they want to take your boyfriend they'll have, for a night, they'll have more success than men who want to take your girlfriend for a night on that? average. Well, that, that's a great segue because we can now talk about, so, so those are the reasons to think that men cheat more than women. And why is that, right? Why do men cheat more than women? I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat agnostic on the idea that it, like, it, it's still possible that men cheat more, but one theoretical thing to consider, right? If new research came out that showed women cheat more, I, I'd be open to accepting it. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not emotionally committed to any ideas. But one of the theoretical reasons to expect men to cheat more is that male mammals, right? Hum humans are mammals male mammals have a very powerful benefit from infidelity that female animals can't have, at least in the same way, right? And I, I, I'm realizing just when I'm speaking that I don't think infidelity is a good thing to do, right? I don't think cheating is a good thing to do. Uh, a lot of people, they might, they might clip things I'm saying and take it out of context. And when I'm saying that infidelity is natural, it's evolved, a lot of people are saying that it's inevitable or think that I'm saying that it's inevitable. It's not, right? Plenty of people, probably most people don't cheat. Or that it's good, right? But there are plenty of natural things that are bad, right? Like I also believe that under, in very niche circumstances, we have psychological adaptations to homicide, right? Right, killing people. I don't think that murder is okay, but I recognize that mammals sometimes kill each other, right? And and that there there are sometimes fitness benefits to engaging in such a risky activity. Don't please nobody clip me and say that I think homicide's okay. So going back to the topic, right? Why do men cheat more? One of the theoretical considerations that's worth bringing on board is the fact that male mammals, when they have multiple partners, can increase the number of offspring that they have, right? So for male mammals, to an extent, quantity has more benefits relative to female mammals, right? And, you know, obviously, you know, gender and sex, these are complicated things that interface in complicated ways. But for the most part, men are male mammals, right, in general. Uh, most men would be male mammals, right? And most women would be female mammals, right? And so men have this benefit to multiple mating that women generally don't have, which is that they can have multiple offspring. And this was in our ancestry. So, so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an evolutionary behavioral scientist, right? I'm interested in the, evolutionary, the evolution of human behavior. And so I'm looking at how did this behavior benefit our ancestors? So obviously in a contraception context, having an affair isn't gonna get you more offspring. 
But because male mammals can have multiple mates pregnant at what, one time, whereas female mammals can only be pregnant by one mate at a time, male mammals can expand their progeny by expanding the number of mates they have. But that doesn't work in a modern society. Not necessarily. It right. could. I mean, sometimes that still happens, right? Ch children are born out of affairs, right? That, 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 that sure. still ha I won't name any. I mean, I shouldn't names, say but... it doesn't work. But it doesn't it... socially acceptable. And no, certainly not. A, and I'm not sure it ever was. Har and it doesn't yeah. bring harmony yeah. in a relationship yeah. when that's happening. Yeah, I'm not saying that, that that's a good, again, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do. Right. But I also want to note that, so th that presence of that powerful benefit could be part of the reason why men cheat more, right? Is that they have this additional benefit to infidelity that women don't necessarily have. But there are other reasons. I don't want to oversimplify it. Like, I think a lot of people would hear that and they would say, okay, well, let's take that to the bank. Why do men cheat? They cheat because their male ancestors who had affairs had more offspring than their male ancestors who didn't have affairs. Not exactly right, right? Infidelity is a tool that can be put to many purposes for an animal, right? And in humans, it's quite complicated because we also have these complex social structures, right? So yes, some people who cheat are driven by a desire for sexual variety that probably in males helped increase progeny. But other individuals, right? There are individual men who cheat, for example, to mate switch, right? To obtain a different mate. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're with one woman and they want to be with a different woman and the infidelity is the way that they facilitate that. And that's true of women as well. Why not just break up first? <laughs> David Buss has a funny quote on this. He said, why would you quit your job before looking for a new one, right? Why would you dump your partner before seeing what else is out there? Right. You and have so, some security, you yeah. have some you know, familiarity, yeah. you have income, you have yeah. value from the exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So mate switching is another reason women and men both mate switch, right? And some scientists think that the main reason women cheat is to mate switch. Uh, I won't weigh in on that, but that's that's one that's one viewpoint. What is the research saying on why women cheat? Okay, well, again, it's similar to men where we have these many functions, right? So women and men both cheat to mate switch to an extent. Women and men both cheat to, frankly, get revenge on their partners for wow. infidelity, right? Oh, right. And, there, and there's some published research that indicates that women might be more likely to cheat for revenge. And it's an open debate as to whether that's a genuine psychological tendency or whether it's just that they get cheated on more and so they have more opportunities to actually pursue that strategy. Sure. Women in some societies, such as the among the Himba of Namibia, right? The, this is an agro-pastoralist group. They, they have incredible rates of infidelity, much higher than we see in the West. Mm. Incredibly high rates of women's infidelity, female infidelity. And uh, the main reason, based on a few studies from Brooke Shelza and Sean Prowl, uh, who are brilliant scientists uh, and, and, and I've spoken to them before and they were both a pleasure to speak to. Their work indicates that in that socio-ecological setting, the primary reason that women cheat is to obtain multiple investors, right? Now we see women cheat for multiple investors in the West as well, but it looks a little different, right? This would be the case where the woman is dating one guy, right? And he's, you know, provisioning benefits to her in various ways, but then she's also got maybe, you know, and this isn't a common thing, but maybe she's got kind of a sugar daddy type relationship on the side as well. And it's like, you know, boyfriends do lots of good things for you. And so if you have multiple boyfriends, you can have more of those good things, right? Right. And that seems to be a primary motivation among the Himba where, you know, it's, it's a somewhat resource scarce situation. And so one of the benefits that women accrue through infidelity is they obtain multiple partners who are putting resources towards them. More and resources, offspring. more safety, more resources, more opportunities. More everything, more right? Everything. So that's one reason that uh, women cheat and maybe to an extent men as well. I don't know how common that strategy is in the West, but it's certainly, again, it's important to understand it. It's certainly common there. So there's tons of reasons. And then another one, and this this is the last one that, I'll, that I think I'll mention unless, unless you want more, because there, there really are many strategies. The last potential reason that women have affairs, right? is to couple the, let's say, the indirect benefits of one partner with the direct benefits of another, right? So indirect mm -hmm. benefits are, some people call them conceptive benefits or genetic benefits, right? This is, you can have an affair, and this is something that we see in other animals. You can have an affair with a male who maybe has, you know, who's maybe healthier, right? Something like that. And then your offspring will be healthier. And then you can raise those children surreptitiously with, with the boyfriend, with the boyfriend wow. who maybe is a better investor, right? Oh, so that's, but that's that's not particularly common. It's you know in Western pop, I don't want anyone to. It's not particularly common for this to actually. I'm not saying that it's not. It doesn't have a profound influence on our modern psychology, right? The roots of this behavior. I would say that that to an extent it does, 
right? And then there's, a, there's various pieces of evidence for that. But in terms of the actual execution of that strategy, very low frequency. Uh, generally, like, like uh, I mean, on the internet, you hear all this nonsense about people saying, oh, the extra pair paternity rate, right? The rate of you are not the father is like 30%. And I'm like, really? no, it's not, it's not, okay. it's not. And nobody, please, nobody clip this. <laughs> it's, they say it's 30% because they go to paternity clinics where men who are already suspicious are looking to find out. From those people, from those 30%. People, which, and, and it's like, okay, that's like, going to, that's like going to an auto shop to try and determine the rate of car crashes. If you look at general population studies, right? Studies where, the, where it's not self-selected in this incredibly biased way, you see rates uh, more like, three yeah. percent would be high yeah yeah two percent would be more normal sure and you know generally if you ask a scientist who studies paternity they'd say in western samples one to two percent but in some groups it's very high uh like among the himba right again from namibia it's like 50 50 yeah it's <laughs> you 48 don't percent oh it's my 48%. goodness yeah but, but but it's not a you don't know but situation that become, there's a strange cultural context it's worth noting isn't it it's more, not a you don't know situation yeah, isn't it more that, they do know isn't it more about like being raised by a tribe and the more men that are involved with a woman the more likelihood they'll help take care of the child as well is yeah kind of, of that? that's actually that's 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 about right it's and it's not the same setting i mean in the west we there's a debate as to whether it's even analogous because in the west when a man finds out oh that my oh my god my wife slept with someone else and i'm raising that guy's kid right that's the end of the relationship pretty consistently right that's a disaster but among this group it's like, yeah, I know that's not my kid, right? But I'm going to raise him because he's right down the street or he's in the tribe or he's in the community yeah, it's, or whatever. Well, it's, just yeah. a, it's just a different, it, it, this is a much more complicated question.